I'm not sure which one is my favourite, a cone or a pyramid, but I know the thing I like about them is how they have this peak at the top, this summit, like a kind of mountain, and they go from this huge base and they reach a single summit. And that's actually a clue as to how to find the volume of a cone or the volume of a pyramid. Just to be clear, the shape on the left here is a cone, kind of like an ice cream cone, but upside down. The shape on the right is a pyramid. Let's just label that. So this would be a cone. This is a pyramid. Now, what is a frustum? You might not have heard that word. A frustum is a big cone with a small cone chopped off. In other words, this shape down here at the bottom is a frustum. I always used to think it was called frustrum, but it's actually frustum. How is it helpful then, the fact that they reach this single summit? How can we find the volume? We're often asked to find the volume of these shapes. How do we do it? Well, normally with volumes, you're used to saying you get the area of the cross section times by the length. And it's the same here with cones and pyramids. The only thing is that you have to divide by three. That's the only difference though to any other volume. So we get the area of the base for a cone, area of base, times by the height, but then divide by three. And it makes sense that you have to divide by something because if it was just area of base times height, in the case of a cone, because the base is a circle, that would get you a cylinder if you got a circle times by the height. So that can't be just base times height. You have to divide by three. And it's the same trick for a pyramid. That is pretty cool, isn't it? You get the area of the base for a pyramid. In fact, any shape where it reaches a single summit, like a mountain, you can do this. Area of base times by height and then divide by three. In the case of a cone, the area of the base is going to be the area of a circle, because the base of a cone is a circle. So the volume of a cone is going to be the area of the base, which is, what is the area of a circle, if you remind me? It will be pi r squared, so pi times radius squared, and then times it by the height times by h, let's just call it. Don't forget to divide by 3. So all of this is going to be divided by 3. And that is the volume of a cone. That's so cool. Let's actually try that out in a question here. We have a radius of 3. It's the radius of the circle at the bottom that we care about. Let's give this cone a height of, say, 5 centimeters. That's going to be the height. Let's label that on here. What is the volume going to be there for? Do you want to work it out? It would be pi times by the radius squared, so pi times by 3 squared, times by the height, which is 5 centimeters, and all of this divided by 3. And there we have the volume of this cone. I think that's pretty awesome. But all you have to do is get the area of the base, times it by the height, and then divide by 3. In this case, 3 squared is 9. 9 times 5 is 45. So we have 45 pi. Just doing the calculation. And then we divide by 3. And after we've divided by 3, we would get 15 pi. Which you could turn into a number on a calculator, or you could just leave as 15 pi centimeters cubed because it's a volume brilliant let's try it out on our pyramid can't even believe that this is going to be true let's imagine this is a square based pyramid a square based pyramid so all the sides of the base are the same and let's call it eight meters let's call each of these sides eight meters so that side would be eight meters all the other sides would also be eight meters and let's give the pyramid a height of 10 meters. I think the Great Pyramid in Egypt is quite a lot more than that. But we have a mini little pyramid. 
what would the volume of this pyramid be? Is our trick going to work? I hope so. Area of the base, well, that's just the area of this square. So 8 times 8, which is 64. Then, times by the height, and the height here is 10, so times by 10, 64 times by 10, which is 640. And all of that divided by 3. So 640 divided by 3. There we have it. Now, you can do that in a calculator, but I believe that would be 213.3 recurring. Something like that. And that would be meters cubed again, because we're dealing in volume. All we did, remember, is get the area of the base. I'm even going to highlight that, just so it really sinks in. The area of the base. Whoops. On the base. Hmm. Area of the base, well, I can do it on here. Times by the height, divide by 3. And with the pyramid, let's fill it in manually. Area of the base, times by the height, divide by 3. Now, for a frustum, it's a little bit more of a journey because can you guess how we're going to get the volume of the frustum, just that bottom bit? If you guessed, get the volume of the whole big cone, take away the volume of the small cone, you're absolutely right. So let's imagine this big cone has a radius of 4 centimetres, and the small cone has a radius of 2 centimetres. What would the volume of the frustrum be? Well, we'd also need to know the height of the whole thing. So let's imagine the height of the whole cone big cone, if it was all put together, was 12 centimetres. And the height of the little one, on its own, is just 3 centimetres. There we go, that's enough information now to get the volume. Well, what's the volume of the whole thing together? Same trick, so it's the area of the base, this bottom base here, times by the height divided by 3. Let's do a different colour. So what we're going to do, just to recap, is we're going to get the volume of the whole big cone, all of it put together, take away the small cone, this cone up here, and we're going to be left with this, which is the frustum. To get the area of the big cone, we do the area of the big cone's base, which is this circle here. So pi times 4 squared, because the area of a circle, don't forget, is pi r squared, pi times 4 squared, times by the height of the whole big cone, which is 12, and then divided by 3. We can work that out. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. 16 times by 4 is 64. But you could use a calculator if you'd like. So we have 64 pi as the volume of the big cone. What about the volume of the small cone? Same trick. Area of the base times by the height, divide by 3. The base is going to be pi times 2 squared, because we have a small radius here of 2. Pi times 2 squared. The height of this small triangle is this small cone, excuse me, is 3, so times by 3, and then we're going to be dividing by 3, as always. 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 divided by 3 is 4, so that small cone has a volume of 4 pi. Finally, what did we agree on to get the volume of this frustrum here? Get the volume of the big cone together, which is 64 pi, take away the volume of the small cone, which is 4 pi, and we are left with 64 pi, take away 4 pi, which equals 60 pi. So 60 pi is the volume of the frustrum. One last thing before we go, though. 
before we finish talking about pyramids, cones and frustums. How would you get the surface area, the surface area of a cone, for example? You see that curved bit. We know that the area of the base is a circle and we don't need to know the curved surface area for the volume. We don't need to know that. We already know how to do that. But just in case they ask you to find the curved surface area, and this, by the way, is given in the formula sheet, the curved surface area, so that bit which goes all the way round like a label, this curved surface area has an area of pi rl. Pi rl. Now, I know we haven't talked about L. What is L? L is this slant length here. So this slant length. Not the height. It's very different from the height. It's this length going across here, like so. That is the slant length. And if you want the curved surface area, this area around here, let me show you in green. Ooh, that's not green. <laughs> Where's green? Here it is, green. This curved surface area, pi times r times l. In this question, we don't even know what l is, though. How would we work it out? We have a radius of 3. We have a height of 5. And this looks very suspicious to me because it looks like this is a right angle and indeed it is a right angle how could we find this hypotenuse then this curved length this l exactly pythagoras we would do 5 squared plus 3 squared which is 25 plus 9 which is 34 and then do the square root of 34 in other words to find the l you do pythagoras 5 squared plus 3 squared equals this L squared. 25 plus 9 is 34. And the square root of 34 is indeed 5.83. So L equals 5.83. A bit of a reminder of Pythagoras. If you're a bit rusty. Now with that length, with that slant length, oh, let's just label it slant length, we could then do the slant length, 5.83, times by the radius, which is r, if you notice in this formula down here, that times by the radius, in this case is 3, over here, times by pi. And there we have it, 54.95. 54.96 centimeters squared. That is the curved surface area of this cone. So to recap all the different things we learned today, we learned that the volume of a cone and the volume of a pyramid is simply the area of the base times by the height and then divide by three. Let's fill that in because it's so awesome. There you go. Area of the base times by the height divided by 3. And we learn as an added extra, if we want the curved surface area of a cone, and again the formula of that is given in the formula sheet, you simply do pi times the radius times the slant length. And if they don't give you the slant length, you can work it out using Pythagoras.